Shalom, Kohalayla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled Visiting the Comment Board. There is no earthly mother or goddess. Let's go here to this comment. This brother Big Benjamin says, Shalom, brother. Another edifying lesson. Can you do a Bible study lesson on the nature of the Holy Spirit? False prophets like Big Judah and Big Levi, along with some wicked Eves, are promoting a false doctrine of the Holy Spirit being feminine, calling him the earthly mother and leading the flock astray. The water, brother. If you do not want to do it, let me know. Well, if you know they're false prophets, the question is, why are you listening to them or following the video teachings? Anyway, we're going to answer the question. There is no earthly mother or goddess. So let's go into the scriptures. This video here was menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Let's go ahead and break down the scriptures. Let's go here first to the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it has gathered them. So where is the earthly mother goddess in his spirit? These false prophets like Big Judah and Big Levi need to be quiet. Let's keep going. So they're calling the Holy Spirit feminine and earthly mother. Let's keep going. So his spirit. Let's go to Isaiah 63 and 10. The book of Isaiah chapter 63 verse 10. Let's go to verse 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebel and vex his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy. He fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses. And his people saying, where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? So where is the mother goddess or earthly mother? Now, Jerusalem is called the motherland, but that's not to be worshipped. That's just the holy land. My goodness, boy, these, some of these people, and like Big Judah is reading a lot of books <coughs> outside of the Bible. Let's read this again. Isaiah 63, verse 10. But they rebel and vex his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy. He fought against them. Let's keep going. So it's not a female deity or goddess. We fell for worshiping the Queen Mother of Heaven. Let's go to John 14 and 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, so that comforter, the Holy Spirit, is masculine. 
he. Let's read it again. John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, just like worshiping the Queen Mother of Heaven, we fell for that and, and went off, the kings of Israel, kings of Judah. What is that at? I think it's Jer Jeremiah, <coughs> excuse me, 7. Let's see if I can remember where that's at. Uh, is it Jeremiah 7? One moment. Here we go. Right here. Jeremiah 7, verse 18. Let's go to verse 17. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. So we fell, we fell for worshiping a goddess deity or so-called earthly mother. So these are, <coughs> excuse me, these are seducing spirits that are creeping in in these last days by false prophets. Seducing spirits teaching doctrines of devils. Let's see if I can find that. Let's go to Second Timothy. Book of Second Timothy, chapter four, verse two. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. So these are fables. The earthly mother, the goddess, these wicked eaves, and these bugged out, high-ranking beta males are going off from the house of Saul, teaching lies. Let's keep going. Let's go to Jeremiah 4. So, before we go to Jeremiah 14, the Most High sent his word so that only the prisoners of hope can understand this word. So, what happens when you are in prison, everything is in code. It's encoded. The letters, the messages, messages, letters, all in the writings are coded for the prisoners of hope. Who are the prisoners of hope? Only the elect of Israel is going to be able to understand this Bible and are given the gift of the Holy Spirit of truth. But everybody else is going to be blinded or confused. So prisoners can pass a coded written letter, pass it around through the guards, through the prison system, through the mail clerk. Nobody is going to understand what's written on it because that letter is coded. So this Bible is only for those that have ears to hear, which means the elect. That's why people are getting confused because the Most High is very poetic. He's a Jake, the spirit of Jake, poetic. So let's go to this. So the Holy Spirit also does what? Heals, comforts, and nurtures. So when we were sick growing up, you didn't have your daddy wearing a shower cap or a scarf and giving you soup, hot soup to drink, and warm lemon tea with honey and ginger. That was a nurturing spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit, because it heals and it comforts us, Most High is using parabolic talk. 
and using that Holy Spirit descriptively with feminine traits because it's a nursing spirit. Like when we were growing up and had our mothers nursing us back to health. That's all it is. But it's a masculine spirit sent by the Most High through Yahweh Shai. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go to Jeremiah 14. Let's go to Jeremiah 14. We got to start reading at verse 6, no, 18. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 18. If I go forth into the field, then behold the slain with the sword. And if I enter into the city, then behold them that are sick with famine. Yea, both the prophet and the priest go about into a land that they know not. So when we begin to go off and begin to rebel against the Most High, we fell from grace and we went into captivity and bondage. So we became dead to life, which is rulership and grace, mercy. Let's keep going. Jeremiah 14, verse 19. Has thou utterly rejected Judah? Have thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us? And there is no healing for us. We look for peace and there is no good. And for the time of healing and behold, trouble. So we have to be healed. Why? Because we were beat down to a low status. Captivity. Being afflicted. And our people are spiritually, physically, and morally sick, doing all types of wicked abominations. Mothers putting their babies in the oven, children killing their parents, men with men, and women with women. So we are morally, spiritually, physically, and mentally sick. We can only be healed by this word which is a comforter, a nursing spirit. Let's read that again. <clears throat> the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 19. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Have thy soul low, Zion? Why hast thou smitten us? And there is no healing for us. We look for peace, and there is no good. And for the time of healing, and behold, trouble. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. So how do we get healed? By coming back. Let's see. How do we get healed? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go to Jeremiah. I think it's 17 and thir 13. My internet is down. You have got to be kidding me. Let's get it here. Let's get it here then. Jeremiah 17, verse 13. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 13. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forgotten the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word? Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. Let's go back to verse 15. Behold, they say unto me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. Why? Because we're being healed by this word of truth. Let's go to Psalms 107, verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 107. So this is the nurturer, the comforter, or the healer, because we're being nursed back to life by coming to the fountains of living water. Or the bread of life, this truth. Book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them 
and delivered them from their destructions. Even in ancient Babylon, when we went off. So the Most High uses prophets to bring his word, to give us comfort, instruction, or to heal us, to give us a sense of direction. So we're being healed by a nursing spirit, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Hosea 6, verse 1, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. Well, that doesn't mean the earthly mother is doing that. That means the spirit of truth is nursing us back to life. So there is no earthly mother or goddess. So this spirit is given feminine qualities because of its nature to heal. So when you think of the traditional sense of a nurse or a mother that carries a female or feminine spirit, and that's the traditional understanding of it. But in today's time, Babylon, it's confusion. We got men wearing aprons and rolling bread, and we got women working on construction sites and construction trucks. Go to Song of Solomon 8, verse 1. <clears throat> Book of Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 1. Oh, that thou were as my brother that sucked the breasts of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee. Yea, I should not be despised. So we're sucking the breath, breasts of our mother. That means we're being nurtured. By, the, by these lessons, by the words coming out of this book. We're learning. Let's read it again. I'm going to get a precept to help explain it. Song of Solomon 8, verse 1. Oh, that thou were as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee. Yea, I should not be despised. So what what breasts? I think it's Second Peter Chapter 2. If I don't get lost. Nope. One moment. Right here. First Peter 2. Verse 2. As newborn babies desiring the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. See, so the breast of our mother is absorbing the nutrients of this truth. So this is how we're being nursed and maturing through the spirit of the Lord. If we're true and sincere about this word, but only the hopeful elect are going to be nursed back to health and revised back to life on this side. Verse 2 again, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Very basic fundamentals and not trying to be extremely deep. Let's go to Song of Solomon 8 verse 2. I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. Who would instruct me? I would cause thee to drink of spice wine of the juice of my pomegranate. So we grow in this truth, eventually being able to drink the wine and to eat strong meat. Let's keep going. <clears throat> so this spirit of truth matures us and raises our spiritual IQ and gives us life, eventually leading to immortality. Let's go to Job 33, verse 3. My word shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge. Let's read it again. Job 33, verse 3. My word shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of the Most High hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. 
Well, that is a masculine spirit. Who is the Almighty? Most ancient of days, the Father, Yahweh. And that breath of life initially was breathed into Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai was given the breath of life. He is the Son of the Most High. Let's read it again. Job 33, verse 4. The Spirit of the Most High hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. So in the beginning, he created the first light, Yahweh Shai. And when Yahweh Shai was on the earth as Adam, he breathed the breath of life into Adam by giving him his word of truth. So this word is connected to life, breath, being revitalized back to health. Let's go to John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Where is this earthly mother at? Or this goddess that these Eves and big Judah and big Levi is talking about? Reading about a masculine spirit coming from the Most High through Yahweh Shai. Let's read it again for big Judah and big Levi. John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Oh, you false prophets have been defeated. Be quiet. Please be quiet. So that you don't poison the flock of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Hopefully this lesson. Wait, let's get one more. Let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 24. Let's get that. <coughs> Excuse me. Right here. So we're being healed by the comforter, which is a nursing spirit. And we're feeding off of the breath of this true doctrine. Being nursed back to health. Let's get 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Once again, we're healed through the word. Who is the word made flesh? Yahawashai, Hamashiach. Pursuant to John 1, verse 14. So that's why Most High is speaking parabolically, using feminine traits, because of the nursing aspect of it. Let's read it again. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. So when you're outside of this truth, you're, you're where? Walking dead in the valley of the dry bones. That's where we are today, but we're waking up and being revitalized back to life, resuscitated back to health. What's the opposite of being healed by this word? Let's close out with that one. Proverbs 21 Verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. See, but we're dead to life if we're outside of this Bible. Let's go to Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, verse 35, for whosoever findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his soul, 
all they that hate me love death. So if we reject this nurturing spirit of truth and comfort and wisdom, we're going to die or remain amongst the congregation of the dead in the valley of the shadow of death. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, or Kakadash. There is no mother goddess or queen mother of heaven or earthly mother. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babao. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom, Barakatham.